Hi everybody! Uh, in today's video I am going to show you a few tactical positions uh, with one specific pattern being uh, in common for, for all of them. Uh, so if you want to learn better I suggest that every time you see a new position you pause the video and well you try to solve it uh, for yourself. Uh, all right, uh, it's white to move in this position. Uh, by the way, all these positions were from real blitz games. Um, so with this position or similar could happen in, in your game. So it is white to move. Uh, step one, you always count the pieces just to figure out the position. White is four pawns down, right? And uh, black's king to be, seems to be safe. Um, it seems that white is losing. But hopefully you would notice that the queen on g1 is uh, sort of in trouble can only move down the back rank, so uh, hopefully a move like rook e1 and rook c1 come to mind. So, and, uh, so the topic of uh, uh, this video would be a comparison. Method of comparison. In all of these positions there seem to be like two moves to play or two move orders to achieve a winning position and it doesn't seem to be a, a big difference between them. And uh, this is uh, often the case where people in a, in a winning position misplay it because ah, it doesn't matter, this is winning anyway. So pay attention to details, that's what I'm trying to say here. So there are two moves, rook c1 and rook e1. After each of those moves, the queen cannot really leave anywhere. All the squares of the queen are taken by the rook on e2, basically. Uh, or the rook standing on second rank. Uh, depending on the move uh, white is going to play. So what can you do if you don't want to lose the queen? You try to, if the queen cannot run away or you cannot cover it, which is the case here, you try to attack your opponent's queen or give a check. Well, check is not a possibility, but hopefully you would see that a4 is a move that can disturb white's coordination. And then white's queen would have to go somewhere. So, uh, Let's say you go rook e1, black goes, well, you do have to calculate, you shouldn't make a move, but to illustrate the point is the following. So, so b4, a4, and now queen has to go, and queen doesn't have that many places, it's b4 and a4. So if you take the pawn on a4, there's um, x-ray from the rook on g4, and uh, I think there are plenty of moves for black, but probably the simplest would be, le let's say, move the bishop to a7 or whatever, counterattack the queen, and now this queen will have to have squares to go to d4 and b6, and if you take my queen, I take your queen, and white is not winning to put, to put the list. So, uh, you might consider queen b4 with an idea to give check on d6 and run away with the queen. Uh, but hopefully you would see that there's a move bishop b6 counterattacking the, the queen and the queen on g1 is protected. This is very important because after rook g1, rook takes b4, white cannot recapture the rook because the rook on g1 is hanging. And uh, you can calculate one step further, queen d6 check and then black has bishop c7 and now this queen is free to escape uh, no matter what white is doing. So, but what is the difference? A4 is coming anyway, right? Well, the difference is huge. If white goes rook c1, black goes a4, there's one square left for the queen where nobody can bother the queen. By the way, the queen doesn't like to be bothered, as you can see from this example for, for black. And that's it. Black's queen is trapped. And that was actually the whole exercise. It may be easy for somebody, it may be difficult for somebody. I hope you can learn from this today. So rook c1, rook e1 were two options. It just uh, rook c1 gives more options for the queen. So rook c1 is winning, rook e1 is, uh, uh, is, actually, is actually losing in this position. Rook e1 uh, is losing. There's, uh, yeah. That's it. There's rook e7 move, but we're not gonna consider it at the moment. Rook c1 is just simply winning the full queen. Let's go to the next position. Uh, I'm gonna flip the board because it's black to move in this position. So black to move and win. Uh, again, we start by counting pieces. One, two, three, four, five. Same number of pieces. Then we check uh, loose hanging pieces. The rook on e7 is in trouble. 
the knight on f3 is under attack and pawn on g3 is just basically hanging. So hopefully uh, it comes to mind uh, to uh, if you take on f3 you can distract the queen and win the rook right and if pawn takes you just grab the pawn on g3 and that is definitely crushing so move like distracting the defender is a, is a typical pattern here but then you encounter that you can take on e7 first rook e7 queen e7 and then take on f3 doesn't make any difference it's not sure yet or you can take on f3 right away so let's see the, di the difference actually the difference is enormous you have to look for counter chances for your opponent. So if you take on f3 first, white has amazing counter um, attack move, bishop takes f7 check. And uh, if black takes with the rook, it's rook takes e8 check, king goes and black, white can easily take the bishop and black is, black is almost lost here, queen g3, queen g2. Uh, when I was doing, by the way, I did all those puzzles myself so I can share with you my thoughts here. I, I understood that this is the winning combination. I wanted to find the difference. So I was, uh, when I was calculating bishop f3 on bishop f7, I was calculating king h8. I moved the king to a safe place and uh, I did win the piece and I'm planning uh, to take the rook on next move on uh, e7 uh, and then white will have no checks and queen g3 would win. And uh, at first I couldn't see the difference, like queen takes f3, rook takes, uh, rook takes e7, there's no check for my king. Uh, if pawn takes, uh, I take on g3, that, that would be crushing. And then I take on e7, take on f3. Okay, let's, uh, let's put it on the board. This is what I was calculating. And then I'm taking on f7 and winning. So at first I couldn't see the difference. It seemed like both moves are winning. Rook e7, queen e7, bishop f3, and bishop f3 first. Only later I, I saw that after bishop f3, bishop f7, king h8, there's queen e6. And I resign because mate in one is coming and the rook is hanging. This is just black is collapsing, which is very unusual because, well, in your mind, when you're calculating the square on e6, very often could be still under control, even though the pawn is long gone. So the winning line goes rook takes e7, queen e7, bishop f3, and if g takes f3, it's queen g3 and black collects all the pawns and they win. Uh, one more thing you have to uh, check out is also rook f1 move because there is a problem on f7, right? There's enormous problem here and the knight is pinned, so it's not that obvious. But black can just simply go bishop d5, stopping all the threats and black is winning. So again, this was a method of comparison. And the difference is, first of all, white has bishop takes f7 move, which is easily blunderable if you jump to conclusions. Ah, it doesn't matter. This and that is winning. No, every time you get a winning position and you, it seems to you that you have two or maybe even more winning options, pay attention to details. Very often it's not the case. Very often there's a detail that you can lose, like bishop takes f3 and black is in big trouble. Rook takes e7, black is just winning. So it's a huge difference between, uh, between um, these two lines. Let's go to the next example. This one, black to move. Black to move in this case. So we count the pieces again. White is two pawns up, right? Right. But the rook on d4 is just handy, hanging there, right? You can take it with the pawn or you can take it with the bishop. Well, otherwise it would just move away. You may consider briefly g3 move, but that's not the best move in the position. The point of this video is which one do you choose? Do you take with the pawn or do you take with the bishop? Uh, just like in previous example, uh, exchanging pieces favors you because you're about to win material. So I would uh, prefer bishop, if, if I had to choose, I would prefer bishop d4, but uh, you have to take into account rook takes d4 and bishop takes d4, and those two bishops look dangerous. There's also queen g5 check to check out, and d6 check white has. So you have to take your time, there are plenty of forcing moves available for white. So what is the difference? It took me some time to figure out the difference. It seemed that everything is crashing, but my intuition told me take with the bishop, just exchange pieces. There is an enormous difference. One way black is crushing, another way the game continues. And the difference is not obvious at all. Remember like in previous one, 
square on e6 after bishop takes f7 was not under control anymore. Here's something similar. <clears throat> if you take with the pawn, it is not obvious, but the, the difference is that the bishop on c5 is loose. Who would have guessed, right? Who can attack this bishop? The thing is, white goes queen g5 check. You have to go queen g7, otherwise you can lose material. And now d6 check. King has to go and queen takes c5 and white wins your bishop and um, white has an uh, enormous attack with, with a powerful pawn on d6. You, you may continue d takes c, but hopefully you would realize that this is not what you were looking for at this point. So here's the difference is just take with the bishop. If queen g5, queen g7, d6 check, it actually doesn't really matter where to move the king. You just move black has the full rook up for several pawns, which would eventually drop off. So in this case, the difference was hanging bishop on c5. And of course, you always check forcing moves available for your opponent. All right, so this was another example of method of comparison. If, if you do this... There is no bishop hanging on c5, so you can free to go to f8, and black is winning. That's the difference. But generally speaking, you should simplify the position if you are about to win material. This limits your opponent's choice. Okay, next one. That's a nice one. Uh, black to move and win. Just a few pieces on the board, especially in blitz game or in time trouble. Um, a lot of people would, would miscalculate this one. So what is the problem? We count the pieces, same number of pieces, right? White has active rook, but this knight is very loose. It is attacked, the rook is not solid, right? So you calculate king f8, right? King f8, uh, rook, if rook moves, you take the knight, so it's knight d5. Try to visualize from here. King f8, knight d5. What do you do next? So rook b7 is coming. Knight on d5 is hanging, right? Well, not hanging, it's not protected, it's a loose piece. Uh, yeah, bishop e6 just wins, right? Bishop e6, you attack the knight, rook b7, bishop d5, you win material. It's not that simple. King f8, knight d5. There's actually two ways to attack this knight. It's bishop e6 and rook c5. What is the difference? Don't jump to conclusions. It's not both. And very often in a real game that wouldn't be the case. If you go bishop e6, that's a huge mistake because white has a surprising move rook c7 and you cannot take my knight and you have to move your rook. Uh, if you take, take, take the pawn on a2, knight b5, you're not even one pawn up after all. This is just equal. But rook c5 simply wins. Rook c5 and if white goes c4, it's rook takes d5. So white has to go rook b7, rook d5, and this would be eventually winning for black because bishop is stronger than two, past, two pawns with active rook. That's it. That was the method of comparison. It seems like we have two winning moves. Take a minute to compare them. Maybe there's no difference, but uh, uh, I, would, I would say assume there's a difference. Assume there is a difference and try to find it. Okay? And next one, how many do I got, have I got for today? One second. Oh, I have too many. Okay, maybe in the next video I would, I would show you. All right. Uh, so all the previous puzzles when I was solving, I did them correctly. This one I screwed up. So if any, any of you want to, to beat me in solving this puzzle, I strongly recommend that you pause the video and take your time. Why to move and win in this position? white to move and win and you have there are several moves that needs to be compared all right let's see what is happening in this position one two three four five black has extra pawn knight is very active attacking the rook attacking the bishop loose pieces well knight on d3 is loose right uh, and rook on d8 is unprotected there's sort of back rank problem for black and no back rank problem for white. So the rook is hanging. What do you do? Which moves you need to consider? The rook is loose. So you want to consider rook c8. That should be like number one move that jumps to your head. Like mate is coming. Okay, not mate. Rook takes, rook takes, rook e8, exchange the rooks, win the knight, right? So rook c8 is the number one move. What else can you do? 
Ha, huh, you can pin this knight down the d file, right? You can go rook d1 or rook d2. Uh, and it's actually three moves to compare. Rook d1 and rook d2 and rook c8. Actually, rook d1 and rook d2 have similar, uh, same, same answer for black, same response. I did this one wrong. Uh, I did calculate rook c8, uh, so obviously if rook takes c8, rook takes c8, rook e8 only move, takes, takes, winning the knight, there is no checks, white is winning. Okay, so if, well, knight takes c1, yes, knight takes c1, I also calculated in rook e2, e8, and then I saw takes, takes, and queen takes d3, amazing, good, great combination, and if takes, it is just mate in two coming. So I saw this one, but the line I didn't like was the following. I didn't like rook e to e8, counterattacking my rook. Oh, sorry, not this one, this one I just showed. I didn't like rook takes, rook takes, rook e8, and uh, no, rook e8, sorry, again wrong. What did I, didn't I like? Oh, knight takes c1. Knight takes c1. I didn't like knight takes c1, rook d8, rook e8, and I didn't see how I can trap that knight. Knight e2 is uh, coming with a check. So I abandoned this line. Instead, I chose, chose rook to d1. With an idea of uh, how can black, can black cannot move that knight, right? So I want to capture it. Black doesn't have rook d6, right? Uh, black can try queen d7, but then I just uh, double my rooks, and, uh, and that's it. That's a deadly pin, and there is no rook to d6 because my bishop is there, and I win material. So that was my plan. I did check queen g6 uh, to trade the queens, but I take, take, and double rooks. That was my line that I calculated, and I went for rook d1, and that one was wrong. The, the, I actually blundered two moves. I blundered one move in the main line for me, and here one move for black that I did not see. It, I stopped the line here, I should have continued one move further, one forcing move further for black. A5, that is the move I blundered. Ironically, if white had a pawn on A4, that, that would have been a win, but that was not the case. A5, and now I, if I want to win the piece, I need to move my bishop, but I cannot move my bishop because then rook d6 would happen. Bishop c3, it's rook d6 and I'm one pawn down. And that's it, my bishop has no place to go, I should just go to a rook end game, which is equal. So I blundered a5, So, but what was the correct way? The correct way was rook c8. Rook takes, knight takes c1, that's the line I didn't like. Rook d8, rook e8, and I stopped here because I couldn't see how I can win the knight, but here I don't win the knight. I just go for the back rank. I did not see this long. I, I read somewhere that long diagonal moves are really hard to spot. Well, and I do confirm, long diagonal moves are really hard to spot, especially backward diagonal moves are very difficult. All right. Uh, in the next video, in the next video, I would probably continue this topic because I find it quite useful for, for practical reasons. You get a winning position, it seems like you're about to, to make a crushing combination and then you mess up the move order or you have two options, you choose the wrong one. This is very typical, so I would suggest assume there is a difference and try to find it. If you fail to find it, maybe there is indeed none, but you cannot be like, ah, it doesn't matter. If that is the attitude, you would lose lots of points. Okay, I hope you liked uh, the video. I'll see you most likely in a week. Take care. Bye.